Hello, namaste. It's me, Susanna, and that on the other side is... Namaste, I'm Sagara Ka. <laughs> and today we want to talk about what? You didn't prepare? What? What did I just hear? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we're talking about today. Oh, okay. So I could just like fish something out of the air and just come up with something completely and you wouldn't even know we're not talking about this? Okay. So So I, I was asked by so many people, are you going to join Threads, this new app that is supposed to be, supposedly, the big threat to Twitter. So it's like Threads, Thread, Twitter. That's the topic today. Uh, because a lot of people have asked me if I would join it. And I was like, another social media app, really, do we need one? Mm. So are you joining? No, I don't think so. So apparently if you join threads then and you and you don't like it and you want to delete your uh, account, you have to delete your Instagram account. And if you don't want to delete your Instagram account, then you can't delete threads. Now you're stuck there forever. Yeah, I think you, huh, you're stuck there forever. So I think they're screwing up this, the, um, like they're manipulating the numbers because they had the biggest growth ever. A hundred million people have joined Threads, if I got that number. There's like a hundred million people have joined it. And it's like this big thing and everybody's on it, uh, but nobody's using it. That's right. one thing. We saw an article, 75% drop since they launched. And then the other thing is a lot of people were not aware of this. And I was like, thank God I waited a little bit. You can deactivate your account, Sagorika, but you can't delete it means it will never disappear, means they will always have the high numbers, means advertisement. Right. Right, my right. I mean, Twitter's also changed now. It's gone back to Elon's favorite ex. So apparently when he was younger, that's the ex.com is what he started with. And then he has SpaceX and all of that. So this is part of, mm -hmm. you know, if people are thinking that he's just here to grow it and then sell it off and leave, this is kind of an indication that he's not doing that. He's not just monetizing. Yeah, we, weren't we all thinking that when he took over? Wasn't yes. this all the news that and he's, he's finally just going to just monetize and move on and do stuff? But no, he's, he's you know, building his own thing is here to stay i was just thinking maybe he just named it because he watched the x files and was very <laughs> inspired by the x files uh, <laughs> but, uh, okay, we don't we don't have aliens on twitter we have weird people on twitter but we don't have aliens on twitter or do we okay all right uh now so this guy especially is like extremely um interested in x stuff like uh yeah. that's everything that he has is x so, yeah, I saw everything is X. So that's why I was thinking he has a crush on Gillian Anderson from the X Files. You know, <laughs> it's like everything is an X with him. Uh, but then, um, um, do you really think that it could be a threat? Because the the way I see it, okay, a lot of people joined. There was all this hype about it, and then uh, people were saying there are the hashtags are not there, the search keywords is not there, uh, special bars who you follow and who you don't follow. Everything is just coming in one go. You 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 can't choose what you're watching. And if I'm not wrong, I think there's no discovery page, so you don't have you know uh, Twitter has been built up since I don't know how many years. I'm on it since 2013, but it's like mm -hmm. crazy. And then you see all these uh, things that are missing. Do you think that is a hindrance that they, they jump the gun instead of like making it more po uh, potent? You know, they were like, okay, Chalega, we're just going to put it up without having the key features that the app should have. Maybe he just really desperately wanted to compete uh, because uh, Twitter, after especially after Elon Musk has taken over, has finally gotten a lot more uh, open about so many things. And there's a lot more commotion there than was permitted to be there previously. So I think even more people are joining just from a funny perspective. This this is a parody account. So it says new social media app X has already passed 400 million users in less than 12 hours. So that's obviously not true because Twitter has existed from before. It's not a new app, but that's how he 
Oh, that's so cute, crazy. man. That's so cute, yeah. man. I, I like this. I like this. I mean, maybe if yeah. it's, uh, our audience likes it, maybe we should like incorporate more like funny tweets or sarcasm tweets or stuff like that because we're just chatting. So whenever yeah. you have a suggestion, just leave it in the comment section and we will talk about it. We will also yeah. talk about you if you're willing to take the risk that we talk about you. So, <laughs> yeah, um, tell us about yourselves. That would be so fun. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, I just read this article somewhere that Mark Zuckerberg keeps on jumping from one thing to the uh, other, you know, one one year he's interested in this, next year he's interested in that, like the meta, metaverse or meta, metaverse, I don't know. Metaverse, yeah, metaverse. So, huh, so now Facebook is now suddenly metaverse, but nobody's jumping on the bandwagon because these glasses are so apparently, these 3D glasses are so very expensive and now it looks like this was a big gamble that is not paying off. So is he is he needing money? I mean, short attention span that has been established, but is he in need of money because this is going on? Yeah. So Facebook, I think, did a very good job with advertising. I think Instagram is also doing a pretty good job with advertising. I don't know about conversions, but I do see brands that are using uh, both of them. Facebook, I think, has lost out now due to the drop in active users. But Instagram is still doing well. Now, he has WhatsApp. I have no idea what he's doing with, you know, monetizing it and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, this metaverse was actually, you know, created at a time when the tech world seemed to have money, right? So... Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, at that point, it made sense to, uh, you know, break those boundaries, try to get into virtual reality like uh, Google Glasses was doing. Uh, sorry, no, Google. Yeah, Google Glasses was doing a little bit of virtual reality, but Oculus uh, was also involved in that. So Metaverse made sense. I had, an, I had a very interesting discussion with uh, somebody even on the channel. I will link it. It's from quite a while ago, I think a year ago or maybe longer. So uh, we were discussing how Metaverse could actually be used to rejuvenate a lot of uh, historical sites where, you know, mm -hmm. we see how the tourist inflows in Uttarakhand are causing so much uh, destabilization of the ecosystem. So if you are viewing, if you go to a certain place and you are viewing th it through virtual reality, a lot of times you may not actually need to escape to those places. And even that would be monetized. So it's not like you're doing it for free. Some of it would be free, but there would be a paid model. And that would, in fact, help. The money that you got would, in fact, help those regions to be better, to be, you know, more stable, uh, better infrastructure and all of that. So that was one of the ideas. But, you know, it's very difficult to do that. Especially also if you think about the if people are too old or handicapped or whatever, or they, right. can travel, they can't travel to these places, it's, it's a great thing. I actually wore a pair of uh, these glasses once. I don't know what the brand was. I was at the Kobi Shoshani, who's the Israeli um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, consul here in Mumbai. So he invited us and he had, uh, we were, uh, you could like put on the glasses and then you saw a performance. People were dancing. It was it was from a shot in Israel, and they were dancing, and it was all like interactive and everything. So you really felt that like you're sitting right there between them. You know, they were jumping around you, dancing around you. It was really real. So if nobody has ever had that experience, if you wear these glasses, it's actually like you are there. But what happened is is that whole thing is that is that development still going on? Do you know that? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going on, but in terms of monetizing and bringing it to the B2C market, I'm not sure that's gone very well, right? Like We don't see a lot of usage. Even the richest folks I know aren't really investing in it. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, but our story was more about uh, Twitter versus threads and uh, why Mark Zuckerberg jumped into this so early, you know? Like, because he wanted a lawsuit. Oh, no, but he got lost it, right? So Elon Musk uh, threw a lawsuit at him saying that you're literally copying everything. And then there were more funny tweets about literally everything that has been invented in the social media space. Uh, Elon Musk has either copied or pur purchased it outright. Snapchat, right? He created stories and yeah. then put those on WhatsApp as status. So yeah. he's copied everything then as soon as twitter does really well and poses a significant threat he comes out with threads so that's true 
That's do true. you think? Do you think that it is, uh, you know, purely from a propaganda perspective? Because I remember when threats started, um, all these people who are not getting as much traction on Twitter because of their um, anti-free speech views. Like I remember this this uh, personality called Taylor Lawrence, who's extremely far, far, far left. Um, he went on threads and she started talking about how, hey, this is the new, you know, her place now. And all of these were the people who first adopted it. So that is no longer possible on Twitter as much, at least for now. So people are enjoying it as a relatively, you know, back and forth medium where people are actually forced to engage with the other side rather than being an echo chamber. Do you think that threads is created in order to create that, um, Close chamber for so think there's an ecosystem that is because it is directly connected to Instagram. Instagram is more like a mm -hmm. artistic yeah. uh, picture posting uh, app, and uh, you do creative content. And you think the whole uh, ecosystem from there shifted to threats. But they were saying this is a non-political space. They wanted mm -hmm. to keep it as a non-political space. So that I'm not so on threats. I can just like uh, some just have assumptions about it because I don't really know anything about it. I don't even know what it looks like. Right. I, I, I actually thought you'd join and then I'd, you'd be the guinea pig. Don't be the guinea pig. Don't give the numbers. You know, because I can kind of see, you know, uh, there was this big hype about who our own Made in India um, Twitter copy, sort of. Oh, right. And then... Things on it, I like. I'm on it, but the engagement is uh, it's ridiculously low. I'm not giving up on it because I like the idea that you can coo in all these different languages. Like you have the option, you make one coo, and they take uh, the Google Translate option, and they just right. translate. So you are uh, cooing simultaneously in Assami and Bengali and uh, Punjabi and Hindi and Marathi. So in all these languages, of course, there must be mistakes and everything. But in the end of the day, I like this whole inclusiveness about it. And a lot of people join in 2020 like crazily. Yeah, yeah. But it has the same kind of a problem about what Twitter has or what X has or whatever we need to name it now. Is this um, genuine finding stuff and you, you, like, you interact with people and I can't see that on coup happening, you know, even if I may not want to interact with people or I answer people, it is not as uh, instant like it is on Twitter. And I don't know. I'm not a technician. I, I can't. I don't know why that is not happening. You know, this is it's a very interesting thing because coup is, is well done. I don't. It also has a home feed. It has your page, it has direct messages. Everything is the same. But the interaction is very low. And I see the same fate happening to uh, threads you know like a big excitement in the beginning a lot of people joining and then the engagement dropping down drastically like people were on threads in the beginning 21 minutes android users 21 minutes and now it's down to four minutes they yeah i mean who i think they got a lot of excitement and the thing is unfortunately it is a very direct copy same as threads so it does not neither of these give any novelty to the experience right you have nothing that is not there on twitter already so the only mm -hmm. thing that was lacking in twitter was the ability to tweet without fear and now you have that yeah. um one thing is uh elon musk has promised that child porn will be removed yeah that was very important because that was a major hub of Twitter was a major hub of such things. And then it was also uh, closed off in terms of people getting blocked, shadow banned, kicked out, suspended randomly if you were to engage with anybody and did not agree with very leftist views. So uh, now that those things aren't happening, people don't, aren't feeling that urge to move on to like, there was this thing with Rumble, everybody joined Rumble, people who supported mm -hmm. Trump joined Truth Social, and uh, then folks joined Coup because it was Indian. Uh, so I remember once Coup had actually called my father because he tried to be there a little more regularly and they asked his views. Uh, he gave them a couple of suggestions and they actually incorporated it. So I really appreciated Wonderful. that. Yeah. 
had another thing was this was also Papa's suggestion was that um he said that if we really wanted it and i don't know if you remember but nigeria or some other a couple of african nations actually said that they would be moving to ku or yeah. ghana I'm sure they said they would no, be nigeria. moving to no, nigeria. nigeria and russia russia is on it yeah, no, they said they would actually not be on Twitter as much and just be on coup from the government side. So that mm -hmm. was very good. And the way to ensure that people did move to coup was very simple. All the government had to do, and this is Papa's idea, was to actually have these uh, folks, the government, um, the, you know, be, uh, the systems, the departments, the bureaucratic systems, everybody tweet uh, coup first. Uh, you know, 15 minutes before they put it out on Twitter, they would actually put it out on Coup. That would yeah. force journalists to be on Coup. That would force pretty much everybody to get on the channel very quickly and it would create the economies of scale, which is what Coup lacks. So that, I think, would have made uh, helped make it very successful. They even tried, like, for five minutes before anything. Just be on Coup, post on Coup five minutes before you post on Twitter. I tried that. I, tried it. I was a big supporter. I gave interviews about it as well. And I was in like one or two articles about it because I still believe that they can turn a corner and they, they uh, it's just they're losing so much money. And I don't know why it costs so much money. I'm always like astounded by these like accounts. Of, oh, like, no, that's oh, because the hardware behind this requires a lot of money, right? The data centers yeah. they have to do. So that's why they lose a lot of money. I mean, of course, Elon Musk firing everybody and showing how well Twitter can actually work without so many other people is, yeah. uh, is quite the revelation. But I'm not sure if Ku has the same problem considering it's an Indian company. Actually, Indian startups have had issues. But uh, yeah, um, it's got an issue with the uh, data centers and all. The thing is, we, I mean, Ku definitely does not have the kind of budget Twitter does, right? So uh, yeah, they do need the money to just keep going. Just the everyday functions is very expensive. Mm. Um, they have, uh, they, they keep on trying new incentives to keep people on the platform. I mean, that would be amazing if you like Ku first before you tweet. I tried that as well, but it's a different audience. I find uh, people that are on Ku, I mean, a few are on Ku and Twitter and follow me on both. But I find a lot of people on Ku are more uh, innocent. They're not as uh, social media savvy. You know, they uh, sometimes the coups that you're getting are really like, they, they keep on putting their numbers out and uh, oh they keep my on, god uh, yeah they keep on like uh, cooing their numbers and they, they keep on like uh, very innocently ah, hi didi and uh, friendship karoge and you know all that stuff that you don't you don't get anywhere <laughs> yeah on old facebook or on good times yeah yeah so this is uh, you get i think there are people there who are using a social media app for the first time or they feel more comfortable because it's in their language, language they can join yeah. in their language they can join in the language of their choice the language that they speak and then they can like who in that language and they can read who's in their language so i think that's actually a golden opportunity and i do not understand why this is not clicking more with people I think you're very right. I mean, that way, uh, the usage of uh, rational languages has been uh, something that, you know, we before AI, this was the one thing. Everybody said that uh, regional language content will essentially take over the world. And that was very, very important. And, and see, I would say that BBC, uh, you can see that they've been very savvy. They've created that Hindi language portal yes, and most of the others i've asked first post news 18 they don't have it they don't mm -hmm. have it they, and if you see the news in hindi language and now bbc is regardless of their leanings they are supposed to be a very um respected channel so if they're getting if people are consuming hindi speakers are consuming bbc content you can see how their minds are going to be molded and in that can you just check if they have more than one language? Because I think BBC is not only in Hindi. I think BBC yeah, is it's also probably in uh, other language. language in Punjabi and something like that. And that's that's uh, you know you can feed people what you want to feed them. 
It's very smart. So they have it in 14 no, in Marathi, Gujarati, Telugu, and Punjabi. Yeah. And we don't have that. Like our own news outlets are not really having that. No, I mean, Republic, not... Republic World is in Hindi and in English. No, no. Republic uh, is in Bangla also. Uh, oh, so. Okay. That yeah. wouldn't have that. At least in that Bangla. I think he should have it in Ahomia because he himself is Ahomia. So, Arnab. So I'm hoping, I don't know. But yeah, BBC has done a pretty smart thing from their perspective. And it's very dangerous that people aren't picking this up. And it does not give enough opportunity to say journalists in these languages. You have some of the best journalism done in regional, because obviously these are people on the ground, right? They're not writing yeah. secondhand information, receiving it from bureaus mm -hmm. and writing it, which is what we get on the filter channels, even when it comes to Twitter, by the time it's in English, it's essentially lost uh, a lot of content. We'll just see, I think Swati Goel Sharma is one of those few people who goes on the ground and covers a lot of stories. And there's just a couple of them, but especially because everybody is forced into echo chambers due to the algorithms. Uh, we don't get all the stories. And yeah. when we get those stories, they're not completely, um, they have a twist to it by the time it comes to us. So regional language can no, actually I stem that. that. I, I, I see that with yeah. the, if, if anything is happening in India and then I read the articles that are coming in Germany about it, it is not. Uh, oh God. It's, it's so it's bad. Having, <laughs> It's having like twists Germany, and Germany, Germany, especially, is very malevolent in its reporting about India. I actually, one of the first videos that I did was in different, in covering what German and French media says about India. It's, it's horrible. And I don't understand it because the relationship between the countries, the, the people, you know, is not like that at all. Anybody I meet when they hear I'm from Germany, they are loving it and they're talking about it. And so many people have people living in Germany. Like my parents are living in the small city, Isni, what is like this tiny little thing with a couple of thousands inhabitants. And there are so many Indians there who are living there, yeah. starting businesses, being there. And they're just integrated. They're just living their lives there. Because I had this in another, like, did I have this one in another chat about that? People don't really are. Ah, that hasn't come yet. Uh, people don't really know what's uh, happening in India per se because the interest is not that high. They're not really into. Uh, they, they just see okay, there is a heat wave and people are dying, or there is a flooding and people are dying, or they know about the slums because of Slumdog Millionaire, or some people who really like India, they have seen some uh, Bollywood movies. Uh, extent is that uh, we go for dinner once a week for Indian food. You know, they, they have a very superficial in uh, knowledge. So the news that you're talking about, I don't know for whom they are because they're not in my family and friends circle in Germany because these guys are not having uh, any uh, in-depth knowledge, even if it is wrong knowledge, you know. You should check out some of the coverage by DW on this because I've covered that and it's it's very malevolent. So, yeah, so that's essentially probably... Discussions so, there and I'm followed. Um, I, I can't handle that. As a German, I, I can't handle that. I find this very um, upsetting to see what they're doing because I looked up to that channel. It was that one channel that I was watching when I was living in South Korea and in Taiwan and just to know what's going on in the world. And, and then I see the news here and I'm like, that's wrong. That is not what's going on. This is not what's happening. You know? So just come to that, slowly come back to the threats and Twitter. Uh, do we have any journalists already on, on threats? Is there anything? Because you said they don't want yes, to be yes, political. Yes. Mm. No, no, no. Okay. So that's the one that I said, right, Taylor Lawrence. Uh, I remember oh. her, tweet, uh, her thread post for some reason because it was one of the first that was put out on Twitter as, uh, oh, look who's joining threads. So that was a joke because um, she had a bad time. So she essentially doxed uh, libs of TikTok who was exposing their transgender uh, movement uh, as being very pedophilic in nature, a lot of it, not the entire thing, of course, but she pointed out situations uh, in schools, etc., where children were being forced to learn certain things. And so Taylor Lawrence essentially gave out her real name, gave out her address. Now, this is being done to a woman. Can you imagine like the fear that she would have to go through? Gave out her address, mm -hmm. her 
folks' names, where she works, everything. And that only made her more famous because obviously she has a lot of support. Nobody wants their children learning all of these things. It's the state-imposed education system that's doing it. So um, that was one of the situations. But otherwise, this woman, uh, Taylor, she's got a lot of... Um, uh, cloud. She belongs to a family with a lot of cloud and she can wipe away her history. Her, uh, You know, if you look on the internet, I can find stuff about you. You can find a lot of information about me. You can't find a lot of information about her. So, uh, oh. and people had to dig in, hack a lot of things to find out who she was or, you know, find out bits of who she was. So she's, I don't know, how she's some sort of a plant or something is what she comes across as so these were the far left people who went on to threads just to portray this as being very um cool and of course it did not also catch on like who the economies of scale did not work for them because initially if people go there and they don't find a difference or they're talking amongst themselves there's no argument there's nothing else for people to capture the journalists uh, who want to write about it what will they do like you know, anyway, people are writing about the racial inequalities of sleep, and that comes on Twitter as well. So, what will you do on threads that you cannot already do on X? So, yeah, they wanted to make it more artistic, I think. But the whole problem is like you already have Instagram. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. You, like you're gonna like uh, tweet and wax poetically about the moon, or I don't know what what, <laughs> what actually what actually will you get out of this? Because They're putting on uh, Instagram. They're also putting on threads at the same time. So they're putting the same, and the same followers. And, uh, mm -hmm. This is not what's happening between my Instagram and my Twitter. They're different. You know, what I'm posting Absolutely. on Instagram and what I'm posting on Twitter. Sometimes it's overlapping a little bit, but it's not the same stuff because different things are happening. Different hashtags are happening. So... Uh, I don't see myself. It might turn out to be more expensive for, uh, you know, it might just turn out to be more expensive for Mark Zuckerberg to be doing that because now you have the lawsuit, now you don't have the people that can, uh, you know, that the advertisers can target. So I think <laughs> he finally found the wrong battle to pick because he's done this with Snapchat, right? He made Snapchat irrelevant completely. So. Yeah, uh, but this time trying to make the thing is I don't think like um, that uh, the guy who sold uh, what did he sell to him? Um, WhatsApp. The the guy who sold WhatsApp to him uh, mm. came out later to say that her oh, uh, hey he's evil. Don't do this. You know WhatsApp has changed. Mm. Now the thing is you yourself sold it. You yourself sold it to this person. But the same the and same thing happened with the Instagram guy. Hmm. The same thing Instagram. happened with the Instagram guy, no? Instagram. Instagram. So what I, I read about it, and the thing is, what Zuckerberg essentially did was keep these fellows on board, the people who made Instagram, the founders of it. He kept them on board, and he gave them a year to monetize it. And they did mm. not. They were not able to do it. And how much patience can you expect from the new owner? Like, the whole goal of having such a medium is to also make money to profit it. Yeah. Of course, it's a propaganda channel. Of course, it's, you know, functions as the state, uh, as an arm of the US State Department to some extent, to a large extent, actually. Now, we've seen that with Twitter, how that uh, when Elon Musk came and how those emails and the Twitter files thing happened, that yeah. showed completely. Now, this exercise has not happened with Instagram or WhatsApp or something, because ideologically, Zuckerberg seems to be on the same side as the American establishment. So, um, but now to is not, so that seems to make it more exciting for a lot more people to join. But he's also getting more advertisers. He's restored a lot more confidence in people. So initially, I remember that everybody said, we're not advertising on Twitter anymore. And then there were other people advertising on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. I see Tinder ads all the time. I'm like, why? Huh? Yeah. I mean, all the time. Now, if I don't click on an ad, I read Baba, stop. That's not something, I'm not stopping at it. I'm not. That, that, no, no. Ah, that's, that's another oh, no. thing that, uh, that I want to discuss in another video of ours. Uh, these targeted ads where they're saying, okay, they're so targeted to you. And I always feel like they miss the goal. 
So if anybody is having the experience, this will be the next video we're doing sometime in August. Please leave this in the comment section. I want this to go out. Please tell us if these targeted ads on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever, is anything ever of your interest because none what I'm getting is fitting. Either I'm getting for something that I already bought or I'm getting something and it's getting to the point where I'm getting like really pissed off with the advertiser from bombarding me with something. Yeah. And then I just do a U-turn and go in the other direction because you're bombarding me and makes me like, no, I don't want you anymore because you're overdoing it. Or you have something like, uh, yeah, non-related to my life. Bitcoin. No, I'm not interested. <laughs> Tinder for you and you're in a relationship. I don't I don't understand. You know, it's supposed to be like, so that will be another video. We're not going off topic. If you have an experience, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, you should do a poll on Twitter about this for the next video. You know, sure. uh, engage with the audience and see if they, uh, like, if, if they think the targeted ads that they're getting are working. It'll be interesting because for me, it works on Instagram. That's the only place it works. I am extremely gullible for Instagram ads. <laughs> Why don't I get ads? I'm just really surprised because, because I spend money. So they, they know who to target. You probably don't spend the money on Instagram. So they know who not to target. It's, it's actually pretty good. I, I think Instagram ads has a very captive oh, customer in me. I should pay attention because when I'm scrolling and I'm on it, I see only posts. I don't see any uh, ads. Why don't I get ads? I see it on Akhil's uh, Instagram. He gets ads and I don't because get he ads. Buys off of it. Am I, am I very, because of my verification status, I don't get any ads because I go on his and he gets like ads and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. Where is this coming from? Because I don't see it. I don't get them. You're lucky I'm though, because it makes you waste a lot of money if you uh, are so trying to actually it and stuff. You should, should, you, should, you should make a single video about the stuff that I bought. Instagram made me buy because I always enjoy these videos. Oh my God. I, I don't even have half the things, but that's an amazing idea. Uh, I have the latest video of what I just bought. Yeah, you should do that because I, I feel like uh, my friend Nandita, she's also somebody who's very um, suspect, susceptible mm -hmm. to, uh, the, I think, the YouTube ads. Because if you keep on buying something and it never shows up. It looks great. The stuff looks great. But I feel like this looks too great for this price. It can't be. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's interesting. YouTube ads just never work for me. That's why I find it very weird. Like, so Twitter, I think, has gotten better. So I remember there were these weird ads that used to happen. And then um, now I find them slightly, at least, you know, if you go by age group and uh, single status and all that, Tinder does not. It has some chance with me. So I get mm -hmm. it. But it's like too much of reinforcement. Are, are you not getting any other companies to advertise to me or something? Kia. I, I don't even know how to drive a car. So I don't know why you would advertise cars to me. But <laughs> so that. And then I don't remember. But it's gotten slightly better than before. That I remember. Because... Earlier, I did not want to see ads on Twitter, uh, otherwise they were promoted. And two was that uh, promoted tweets, right? That's what used to come on Twitter. I think we should start calling it X, no? Uh, I don't know. Do we have to call it X? I feel very weird. I no, because... also, then I said, uh, what do I call my... I, I sometimes start my tweets with high tweets, yeah? And then he says, yeah. now you have to call it hey x sides or something like that. <laughs> we had this discussion for breakfast and we were wondering because I came up with uh, a ites So for my... If I'm uh, cooing, I'm sometimes using that. I like I Lady know. Gaga's uh, description for fans with monsters, right? Her... Gaga monsters or something like that. So it's kind of yeah. cute. Yeah. So, but yeah. Uh, uh, it fits her because she's nuts. <laughs> you know, I, I, actually, I like her. I, I kind of like the craziness. Sorry? It's, it's just, she's a great actress, what we didn't know. Yeah. As far as one and it's amazing. Well, also a good answer. But we are um, completely straying off cop topic, topic, topic. <laughs> topic is not because. Um, so no, so we talking about X. Um, yeah. X. No, the thing is, um, third thing, third thing. TikTok, oh. TikTok has jumped into this whole thing. Oh. Yeah, 
So they are saying now they're going to do like only um, posts where you only write, like on Twitter, and they want to be a competition to Twitter. So on one side, you have threads. On the other side, you have TikTok. They want to be all a competition for Twitter. And I just don't see that happening. It's interesting. So one of the major population demographics on Twitter is India. And uh, it's going to get better for India, worse for the rest of the Western world, because they do want to gatekeep. I will say that I've seen a lot of people. There are such racist takes. I will, if I can show you one, it was just, I was very angry. I was very angry. What do I tell you? But, um, ah. So they, there's a lot of uh, gatekeeping. See, I'm not rude. I'm not particularly rude, but this just made me so angry um, because it's very easy to... This guy, this is him responding to somebody who commented in this language because she's Indian. Huh? So uh, Smita Deshmukh writes in perfect English, and his yeah. take is this. This this is what he writes. He's not deleted it. This is his take on. Oh, you're English. Uh, you're Indian. So you know this is this must be how you speak. And you know, f you. But what if somebody speaks like that? You can't speak beyond a single language. She speaks at least Marathi, Hindi, and uh, English at, at the very least. I can tell from her name. You also only got you only got forty eight likes for this, so <laughs> didn't really give him the uh, cloud. Yes, sure. I also cloud. had an original uh, take on this because um, I'll. Um, the thing is, this uh, guy is uh, talking about CPR, which is Council for Policy Research, which is a which is a. Soros-funded uh, policy think tank, and they are facing um, issues, challenges with uh, uh, funding, uh, with, you know, they've evaded tax and all of that. So uh, I just said that uh, an agency funded by those designated as economic terrorists, because that's what Soros is in the UK, right? And uh, in Hungary, sorry, not in the UK, but yeah, that's in, in, in called Hungary Black. And, yeah, yeah. In country. Yeah. So he, he caused the Black uh, Wednesday on uh, Black Monday or Wednesday, the uh, Bank of uh, England being uh, shorted. So he caused that, caused losses to, of millions to co the common citizens in England. Yeah, but you can um, see this Adams, ha, huh, you have written something very solid and he is like just babbling because. Uh... No, but so did, so did Smitha, right? Smitha also wrote something absolutely reasonable. And the way to come back is to talk about, oh, yeah, this is how this is how we used to stereotype Indians in the 70s. Oh, tip-top, 110%, madam, tip-top English. That's what he's written. Like, oh, my God. So then, yeah, <laughs> he's so angry. If you if you are not having any argument, you are going to go to these kinds of tribes because you don't have anything else. Uh, and then they look, what is the vulnerability? Okay, it's an Indian person, so we can make some, some fun about the language and the way they're behaving. Or if it is a German, then we can come up, you Nazi, whatever, dot, dot, dot. And uh, they, 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 if they don't have any argument, then suddenly I'm a Nazi. And uh, if that doesn't We're work, then Nazis. Yeah. No, no, we are women. Are we are women we are oh, women yes. so that's another thing where they can just attack us you know the way we're looking the way we're sitting the way we are not sitting the way we are not making putting makeup or we're putting makeup or whatever you know if the thing is i strongly believe in this by Sadhguru. the way you're reacting to it that's important yeah the way you are giving power to those people you can react, but you should not be emotionally involved. You should, you should not give them the fodder. You, you should not feel bad about something. Why should they hurt you? You can answer. You can have an engagement, but it should be only in your intellect. It should not be with your soul because you, you don't want to Absolutely. hurt yourself. No, uh, so what I've so one thing is that my Twitter feed is very clean, my timeline. I keep it very clean. I argue very rationally. And yes, I argue mm -hmm. very articulately. I don't. I don't go into this sort of, uh, you know, abusive uh, takes. The thing is, um, this is going to get worse for them. They're going to get even more frustrated because we have 
millions of people coming into the middle classes. India has done an amazing job with removing people from extreme poverty. And now more and more people will go into the middle classes, get English language education. They will be able to articulate better, even better than, you know, us. They will be better read because Indians are naturally curious about the world. I hope that's true because I see a lot of reading going down. But yeah, we are naturally curious about the world and we will be commenting. And if the rest of the younger population has any, uh, you know, they're brought up with any degree of uh, understanding about how India works, you will, the, the Western world will see a lot more pushback against this kind of racism, against this kind of bigotry, and uh, of course against regime change operations that they do want to use these platforms to run. They have essentially done so previously. Uh, by the way, uh, we posted this thing on Twitter. Uh, there was a spaces where the guy spoke about how dirty tricks were employed against the sitting government of India. Like he said yeah. that we do employ tricks. So, uh, I may, I don't have a link to it, but I know there was a recording by somebody called Malika. She had recorded the spaces, but uh, it was very interesting how they were very open about how the Atlantic Council. Yeah, uh, we, were the the we, we were in the same chat. So the, the whole idea is that uh, Twitter is now, uh, yeah, these kinds of comments can happen because we have now an open space where all these discussions and even these bad comments can happen. It's not going to be shut down so easily unless it is really very bad and very abusive, you know, uh, directed at somebody. Uh, do you see these people moving over to threads at all? At some point, they might get frustrated. But so the thing is, um, you ask why DW would post something like this, right? It's not what they're catering to is not an intellectual audience. They're catering to creating a citation loop because it's not for now. They don't care how you perceive it now. They care about uh, citing it in an academic article uh, three years down the line. That will oh, be cited no. by other people in other outlets two years down the line, and that will feed into data if five years down the line when you collect all the negative news about India, about, you know, they can uh, create this fake caste system thing, they can create, you know, anti-Christian violence. There are so many uh, right-wing conservative commentators in the American space talking about how the Manipur situation is anti-Christian violence. Just mm -hmm. so it makes you so helpless because they have immense reach and when it comes to this guy who essentially beheaded his sister oh they called it hindutva mob violence against christians whereas my these are not hindus uh, not necessarily hindus there's uh there are almost 40 60 or 50 50 christians and hindus so it's a tribal violence nothing to do with religion but hey uh so uh then uh this thing with um um, the guy who beheaded his sister, she had an affair with a Muslim guy from the same community, but she had it on her own. So her brother beheaded her. So what are the right? Indian man beheads sister. That time religion is not called out. Yeah, but that is a common thing that that will keep on happening. And the whole yeah, thing so, is so what is so great about want... Twitter. Nee, nee, that... But the great thing about Twitter is what they have brought up now. If there's a wrong article or wrong quotation or somebody is trying to spread fake news, you, know, you, have the, uh, you can counteract with a different tweet. And it's always very interesting to go through uh, people tweeting about like, uh, oh, look, India, we, the UK, we give you so much money and support and you are just putting a rocket to the moon. What nonsense is that? We should stop the funding. Every comment under this is taking this man apart. Yeah, yeah. They're actually tweeting, did you just tweet this to get, like, uh, harassed or taken apart? You know, they were asking him, did you, what, what were you thinking when you were tweeting this, you know? And, yeah, and the nice. thing is that what you were saying, more and more people will join Twitter, more and more people will be outspoken. And what we just have to be careful about is that we really know what is the news what is happening, what is real, what is made, you know, and it's getting, uh, I don't know, it's getting more and more difficult. Because how many of us, is we are just relying on Twitter, we go on Twitter for the news nowadays, there's something in the news, or I find something that I need to know 
earlier and faster on Twitter than anywhere else. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But then we have to double check if it is the real, if it is real or if it is with a certain agenda behind it. Small little thing. I need to know what this is the traffic situation in a certain area in my, I need to travel from A to B. And I check on Twitter because it won't be in the news if a truck broke down. But anybody stuck in that traffic jam because of the truck, they have uploaded the picture, they have uploaded the videos, and then uh, we decided on that Saturday there's so much rain and that road is completely flooded, we're not going to travel that side. And that was a good decision. But that is because I found the news on Twitter. I think that is another very appealing thing, you know, for me at least. If I need to know a certain situation in a certain area, you will find that. You will find the hashtag for it or you will find the word for it at least. And that is something that I find that has grown organically over so many years. And I don't think any other app can catch up with this. Mm. You know, I mean, imagine you and I have connected over Twitter. So many of our guests on our own channels have mm. command, uh, connected over Twitter. And it's been it's been an amazing uh, space for me. Of course, you know, there are so many situations you have to also counter. But the good uh, is, you know, more, I think. I, I appreciate Twitter very much. Much more many than you know, any other... Oh, many times if you call somebody out as well and just say you're not behaving the right way, they are right, sorry. I have oh, had this so yeah. many times. Akil said, why are you engaging? I said, I'm just saying, excuse me, but this is no way to tweet about me or this is no way to tweet about another, another person and please behave yourself. I'm like, uh, please delete your tweet. And they actually, many a times they're doing it. So I think that's another thing that we can consider, you know, you're having an engagement with somebody and saying, you know, this is not the right way to behave here. I don't know if it's because I'm blue ticked or if I'm, I'm an actor or I don't know why that is, but I'm always going in a soft way and I'm saying, sorry, but I don't think this is appropriate the way you're doing it. It is not right way to uh, approach this topic. And many a times they just delete it. And they like very rarely it spins out of control. But that is with Indians. If you do it with another culture, that is not really working. They I double down. That. I've seen that they double down on that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then there's this other thing um, about being articulate and being well read. I've been to Twitter spaces, and usually they are like uh, the Indians are argue arguing or bringing their points across much more uh, precise, concise, knowledgeable. Yeah, many a times, especially with uh, when you have a mixed chat. You know, I'm listening to somebody, and uh, if it is somebody who was born and raised in uh, in foreign, but he's Indian by heart, and he's talking about a topic I don't know by the voice uh, where he's from, and then when I'm checking, I see the name like Acha <laughs> So you you think some some foreigner is talking, very knowledgeable, and then you realize, nah, he's an Indian. <laughs> Uh, they can be uh, scary you know, for people to see this kind of because there's a lot of power behind it a, lot, a big country, many people, young generation getting more and more educated coming out of poverty going on social media, engaging and then you cannot uh, control people uh, anymore in a way that you were controlling them before yeah, so one of the reasons I kind of brought India in is because TikTok is not there in India. So one of the major demographics on Twitter is Indian, and TikTok is banned in India. It, it is very dangerous. I don't know, you've probably, you've definitely seen those NPC character trends right, and NPC trends on uh, that are being brought from tw uh, TikTok to Twitter. Those guys going, you know, behaving like a robot and going ice cream so good uh, or whatever, that, that weird thing. No, I don't know what this is Okay, about. so that essentially brings your brain cells down to like zero. They're just pretending to be a robot sitting in a room and just going, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm not acting like that. But they, they no. just did it. So there's these filters that make them seem kawaii, like the anime characters. And uh, yeah. they just sit there, stream for hours, five hours, 10 hours. They just sit there and do stuff like this and go, Ice cream so good, gang gang, and stuff like that. It is so creepy. And essentially, what is happening is they are being sent, uh, you know, somebody sends a rose sticker and they go, Oh, rose smells so good, or thank you, I'm the queen because they got a crown. And um, 
it has a sexual connotation as well, obviously, because that's what sells. So there's this horde of young girls just like OnlyFans started now. This is, you know, happening with uh, TikTok. So you just sit in a room and there's two of you pretending to be glitchy robot systems or uh, cy- uh, uh, what do you call it? cyborg people that are just, uh, you know, thanking people for sending them roses and all of that. They make 7,000 rupees. Like the best performers make $7,000 per day doing this. That reminds me, okay, these kinds of things, then they brought this into that as well, into TikTok. There are all these uh, chatting apps. And uh, I tried that twice. One was banned because it was Chinese. And then somebody else approached me. And I wanted to reach a new audience. And I was thinking, TK, I just do two, three chats and interviews. And I enjoyed them. But... uh, it definitely it's it's the same kind of a system you know one person is streaming and you can just join and watch the stream and then send stuff you know and then they see it. but it's it's uh, it's not they're not pretending to be a robot or something but the filters are there and the and the roses are there and whatever or not and uh, it was not for me i think it works very well in india when you're a musician and you sing or something these people are getting a lot then somebody doing astrology that's also working. And then, of course, girls, no? just sitting and flicking hair and just sitting. Or like, and they are. So they said, they said, you can make money with this. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I'm going to make money with this. And it was like, these two experiences I had, they were really weird. I met a few more of new fan friends and they just shifted over and followed me on Instagram on yeah, the collective IQ of a population is brought down whether you're a consumer or a creator on these platforms. I mean, what exactly are you selling there? You're just selling your face, you're selling that, right? That that's all. And some of them, you know, they wear really low cut tops. So you're selling your sexuality. That's about it. But the consumers brain cells are just going down to zero and that's what you know people are saying that tiktok is pushing these trends essentially to the u.s and uh, a lot of conservative commentators have said how india has done a very good uh taking this very uh um proactive step with banning tiktok initially uh i mean we've done it for different reasons but can you imagine like this this whole population on cool they would be on tiktok consuming this sort of Yes. So yeah, well, um, these challenges, no? These challenges that kill you because you are doing oh, something. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Dangerous. That also. Oh my I mean, goodness. It's, it's already it's already enough. How many people just died now because they wanted to take a picture in this monsoon, and they were standing near the sea. And how many were like uh, how many people in Mumbai alone were swept away? But yeah, har saal hota, har saal hota. The picture part is new, but since growing up, I've read so many items about bandstand we've always been careful yeah we didn't go to bandstand in the monsoons okay like i i I have walked in the rain from naraman point to giga chapati and then back to the hostel so many times because you get a sea spray on you and then it's raining and it's a very mumbai experience but bandstand is not a safe place to go down into because it goes into the sea right the sea can come up and there's rocks right there you don't cross no, over at normal point not even in monsoon alone so it is just yeah. like um, any kind of uh, thing that you're doing for social media that is yeah, uh, borderline dangerous you should think about it twice because it is not it's not worth it you know it's, it's really yeah. not worth it to do these kinds of things. Same goes for any kind of um, provocative content or uh, con- controversies. I was asked so many times, why were you not in Big Boss? Or why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? I said, because I'm a non-controversial person. I just don't see it. I mean, if they would invite me, I probably I would do it. But uh, it hasn't happened because I'm not making headlines about, I don't know what, <laughs> walking around, <laughs> wearing something. Yeah, fighting wearing something. something is the wearing something is the main part. Yeah, or fighting. Or fighting wearing nothing. Something. Wearing nothing. Yeah, some people make it into an art form where you already have to say, "Oh, I admire you," because you just made it into this art form. Yeah, so like some people are uh, yeah. very good yeah. at this. So I don't see myself being on threads. You don't see yourself seeing on threads. I don't think threads is a threat. 
I definitely no longer think so. I, I don't I don't see it from the beginning because like you said, it caters to a different audience. It's like it's likely supposed to be a little more artistic or whatever. But it does the same thing as Twitter. So I'm not sure how those two coalesce because you have that for Instagram already. Like the artistic part is there on Instagram. So or get through it. I have no idea what what was the who's the target audience because if you take the same people that you're having on Instagram and you just export them onto uh, Threads, the fayda kya hai? Same logo. That's that's what exactly what they assumed. They did assume that everybody on Instagram would go to Threads uh, to be able to better access each other because on Twitter you can do that, right? Like I. message you i i uh tweet to you and you have to respond and on instagram there's a lot of private uh handles like private handles mm-hmm. that you cannot access you have to dm it goes to the others i don't check them so on threads maybe that would not be the case i'm assuming i've not been there but i'm guessing that mm-hmm. she could access people that she would not be able to access on instagram uh instagram yeah, most people is cool right Sorry? There are no direct messages yet on 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 threads. Not direct messages, messages, but if you tweet as uh, sorry, if you thread at somebody, then maybe they would yeah, respond to you, right? They would get that yes. message. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm guessing that maybe that's what they assume that people, but that would not cater to a lot of, especially women who keep their profiles private. They wouldn't want to go there anyway. <laughs> so i don't know i don't know i think i i see a lot of actors have jumped on that bandwagon maybe they're ah. trying to like uh, be, be not the first one yeah. yeah not miss out this is a fomo is a big thing no fear of mm-hmm. missing out is a big uh, thing in these days and i the the longer this whole thing is going on the less i am trying to be online because this is not life it is we can make it a part of our lives and we can use it but it should not be our lives uh, that i see my uh, daily consumption and i see where have i been two hours on instagram you know some days i'm just like i have only posted something i have replied a couple of people i have messaged some people about a collaboration where was it to you know two hours is a lot of time to just spend on one app and if you can uh, just switch that to threads and another 2 hours go there because you are engaging with people and chatting with people and whatever because what i do on instagram is i answer people a lot on twitter i also try to answer people so i have basically have left facebook because facebook also uh, shut down my algorithm like completely brought down my um, like reach. from one moment to the other my reach just went it was like 5 600 or 800 likes for a profile picture it went down to 50 like from one day to the other and i was like okay it's the same picture that it's it's there i haven't changed anything it's just me you know you're talking about i'm not i'm not producing the right content it's just a mary shackle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can't really do anything about that but uh i think they're trying to just the same thing put people get people on a platform make them engage very long uh, then run ads on it and threads engagement has gone down from 21 minutes to 4 minutes now you tell me which advertiser wants to jump on that bandwagon mm-hmm. that is true I, i i don't actually know i mean i don't see threads at all anymore because you know it's proven that the user account just went down like just slipped away completely from threads anyway so i'm not sure they will attract as many advertisers they can push the advertisers on instagram to threads perhaps if they show scale of usage there i think that mm-hmm. was the initial idea but now also with the lawsuit they would have to make significant changes for it to even survive and uh yeah i am looking forward to x becoming so- the thing is now x is going to be a banking system and other things as well like whatsapp may you can send money so mm-hmm. i don't know it'll take some time to show up but it'll become more than just a message a, a, a direct platform for information consumption but, but very- will these things work in india because i have this thing about the whole subscription model yeah i've tried subscription model i had my own app uh like in in collaboration didn't work abandon that then they try to do a subscription based thing on um uh facebook with you can send stars nobody sent me nothing yeah 
Then now they're trying it on Twitter. And I don't see Indians want to have free content. They are not ready, you know. They're not ready. They don't have the money or they don't want to spend the money. And it's, I'm not the only one. I see that with a lot of people who are trying to cash in on a certain, uh, like, uh, subscription base or behind-the-scenes stuff. And if it is not sex, it's not selling. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, the thing is Patreon and a lot of YouTube channels I see, they get a lot of super chats. They get uh, Patreon subscribers. They get free content for, sorry, extra content for members. So it works in some platforms. Twitter might not work. I don't know if a blue tick were to give out very uh, good research information. For example, mm -hmm. there's a person who writes on Substack and it's paid. Like, I really want to access that information. It's an Anon account. And yeah. he writes very in-depth articles about history of Indian right. provinces and uh, kingdoms. And uh, it's very well done. That research is articulate. So this person, if it's a blue tick who can write large texts on Twitter and then asks you to subscribe for additional content, yeah. it I think that's just an actor. Yeah. Create a niche audience. Like now, mm -hmm. the others is what happens is somebody like Libs of TikTok or somebody who's more controversial, right? If they have like Matt Walls or someone, if they have a subscription uh, subscribe button, then their fans would contribute to us because just because you're a very, mm -hmm. very large personality, not able to be ignored. And they are large on Twitter because of their controversy. Somebody like you, if you're non-controversial and you have a subscription thing, then we like you know you said your audience is often very innocent and like hi didi uh you know, that kind of audience why would they pay additionally exactly uh, exactly yeah so, so. It would be, actually, yeah it, it makes sense it makes complete sense and, yeah uh, i think so, it just caters subscriptions cater to niche audiences maybe so so also any anything that you guys want to leave in the captions uh, as a comment you know, we would really appreciate it because we try to make this a little bit more of an interactive thing. Yeah. And we're going to do a poll about um, our next topic on, on our next topic, the social dilemma. It's a documentary I saw. It was it came out in 2020 and we want to see how it has changed and how it is moving ahead. Targeted ads. Have you been targeted by ads and uh, how was that experience? That will be probably the next video because we spoke about this extensively here already. And I want to have some interaction with people. I want to like uh, quote somebody from Twitter. Please, yeah, we, we have to do this. And this will be happening nice. in August because uh, I'm shooting. I'm going to be off to Hyderabad, so I won't be there to do another video soon. Good luck. And, uh, yeah. Forward to it you know, so much. Huh? I look forward to it so much. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to it. And... Uh, Anything else, Agurika, or are we wrapping it up for today? I think I think it's a good place to end. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. And do please do drop a comment. Consider subscribing because we do these chats often and it's very free flowing. It's very real, organic. So if you get any value out of it, uh, share it. And thank you for joining us. Bye.